Hello guys, my name is Alex Rodriguez and I want to apologize because of the quality of the video because uh, my camera is just broken so I gotta I gotta try to figure it out how to get a new one. Actually you can follow the link down below if you want to support me because uh, I have a uh, GoFundMe to try to get a new camera. The, um, the main camera that I was using, I don't know, it just stopped recording and uh, I did some crazy stuff and then it came alive again but now it stopped again so i gotta i gotta fix it or i gotta get a new one but the main point of this video is to help you guys to understand how much it costs visiting cuba and in 2022 because there are so many people who wants to come to cuba so many things have changed so in this video i'm gonna tell you guys everything i know about the price or as an average that you can spend by visiting cuba in 2022. full disclaimer Prices might change, the inflation in Cuba is huge, and even though we have like some changes going around, you never know. In Cuba, uh, Cuba is a country that is always going like this. I always say the same because it's, it's how Cuba works, okay? So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys, even before talking about prices and this stuff, is about the season. At the moment of this video, this video has been filmed in, um, we are May 2022, which is the hottest, as you can see, I'm sweating and the cheapest season for coming to Cuba. So if you're planning to visit Cuba and on a budget, they must be they must be the option for you. And those can be pretty, pretty hot. Actually I have a video talking about that right here where you can watch that later. I'm looking like different options because I'm shooting with my cell phone and uh, I don't know exactly where to look at. I have four cameras here. So now that we know exactly which is going to be the season that you want to be traveling to, I want to talk to you guys about the accommodation, which is going to be the first point in this video. The accommodation, it depends about the neighborhood, I mean the areas, the distribution of the house that you want to go, and the uh, how crazy, luxury, good, expensive the, the house is, it's up to you. If you go to Airbnb.com, you're going to find options from $20 to $60 to 100 or even more. So it's up to you guys, but the point here is that you need to look exactly which is going to be the place that you will love visiting. Maybe you want to go to the center. Again, from 20 to 60 bucks per day. You're gonna find a meal over a thousand in Cuban pesos. For example, a dish, a simple dish, main course, is gonna cost you more than 500. 490, the prices changes a lot. So think about that. Calculate per person minimum. I would say that 1,500 pesos. So that would be like at the moment, this video would be something like 50 bucks if you exchange on the black market. Again, I'm not telling you to do that. Now, the next point that I want to talk to you guys about is the nightlife, the drink, alcohol. Do you want to get a drink? Okay, you can go outside and there are so many bars and the bars have almost the same price. They're all they're all type of bars, but if you go, for example, to Bidado, which is, in my opinion, the best place, because there are some bars that you can go and have a good nightlife. There is a bar called Illusion Bar, which is a great option. It's now full of tours. Actually, so many locals go there. It's full of local if you want to share with the local people. That's the best option. And prices might be over 200 pesos per drink. Now, if you want to get a bottle, you're going to be spending more than 4,000 pesos. There cheaper options, but it's up to you. The next point that I want to talk to you about is transfer. Let's say that you come to Varadero and you want to visit uh, Havana, you're going to be using Via Sul or you can be using taxi. I don't recommend you to get a collective in this case because you don't have time to do that. Unless you're visiting Cuba for 15 days and you're going to have time enough to plan, get a collective or go to Matanzas, etc. If you plan only seven days, you don't want to be spending time in Cuba. So what you have to do is you, you, you go to Varadero, then you pay a taxi. And the taxi in this case could be more than 100 USD and euros. Let me tell you this. Taxis, transfers, as visitors, mostly are going to be in USD or euros because they don't accept CUP. For example, the Via Sul is going to cost you maybe 15. It's up to you guys which is going to be the option that you want to get. For example, if you're saving, if you're traveling on a budget and you have time in advance because you really planned what you want to do in Cuba, you can go and choose the, um, the VSU option. Otherwise, you can pay the taxi. Do the math, okay? The currency that you're going to be using in Cuba most of the times is the Cuban peso unless you pay the transfer and other and other stuff. For example, if you want to go to the MLS because you want to see how the MLS store is inside, you can pay by using the car. I mean, credit or debit card 
if they are not from the US. If you're coming to Cuba from the US, this is going to be a little bit more complicated for you because you're not going to be able to use the card. So that's so far, this might change in the future. If you want to support me because I'm trying to get a new camera, sadly my camera just stopped recording, you can go and check the first link down below. I already have a GoFundMe where you can go and uh, you know support me try, uh, trying to help me to get a new camera. A uh, good friend of mine uh, actually is a uh, supporter, Emily Taylor. She, she started this uh, foundation so I can get a new camera. We're talking that <sighs> otherwise I cannot be working as a professional photographer or film like in Cuba. Getting a new camera in Cuba is probably double the price that you're going to see that. Hopefully this video helped you to understand a little bit more. Talk to you, see you guys in the next video. It was a pleasure and I love you so much. Okay, ciao.